Hi, this is Herb with the Dr. Max channel. And today we're going to cover a topic that causes more problems for people new or even people that have used 3D printers for a while than any other issue. And that is suddenly their prints stop sticking to the print surface. Or maybe they have a brand new printer and they've never stuck to the print surface. So we're gonna cover some things that are obvious, some things that are not, and help you diagnose and solve this problem. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. If this is your first Dr. Vax video, help me out, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell so you'll be notified about new videos. There are many, many variables that impact how well your print sticks to the print surface. We're going to concentrate on just a couple today. Variables we will not be talking about are the brand of filament. Different brands of filament stick better or worse. We're not going to be talking about print temperature, so to speak, other than to say that printing at higher temperatures generally help you with print adhesion, the ability for a print to stick to the surface. Likewise, higher print bed temperatures generally help. But if you get your temperature too high, you'll end up with a phenomenon called elephant feet, where the bottom of your print will spread and just won't look right. So one of the variables um, that you need to deal with is what is your surface? Different printers come with different surfaces. Some people like printing directly on glass. I don't. Some people like printing on masking tape. That works great but I find it burdensome to have to put new masking tape on before every couple prints or every print. What I generally find is a couple things that work well for me. The first is, if you have access, this happens to be from Matter Hackers, to a PEI print surface. This is flexible steel. I find those work very, very well. The key though, is you have to keep them clean. And we're gonna be talking about that in a moment. If you have a print surface that you're having trouble with, I find putting a sheet of build tack on it works very well. Once again, you have to keep it clean. And in fact, this print surface, which is glass, that comes with the Monoprice Ultimate 2, um, I covered with build tack because I find it's an easier surface to work with. And if it gets damaged, I peel it off and put a new piece on. Now, many of the newer Creality printers are coming with a new glass surface that has a coating on it. Um, I'm not sure if this is actually PEI or not, um, but key once again, keep it very, very clean. Now let's talk about cleaning these surfaces. The reason you have to clean your surface is because these are an enemy to your prints. The oils on your fingertips, when they get on your print surface, they cause the prints to release. So if you're touching your print surface at all, you wanna clean it with isopropyl alcohol. That will remove those oils. And with, in particular, PEI print surfaces, and I find this works with build tack very well also, it seems to rejuvenate the surface. So rule number one, keep your print surface clean. Now, how, what is the right height for the nozzle to your print surface? Let's look at a graphic together. On the far right of this graphic, you'll see where the nozzle is too high. In that case, you end up with a completely round bead of filament, where very little of the filament is actually touching the surface. In the middle, you'll see a nozzle that's too low. And I'll show you examples of those with actual prints in a moment. On the right side, you'll see a nozzle that's adjusted just right. You want to be able to see the bead, but you want it to be a flattened bead surface. You don't want to be able to push it right off with your fingertips, but you're going to want to be able to peel it off easily when you're done. 
Now, what determines the height of your nozzle? Well, if you have a manually leveled printer where you have screws under the corners of your print bed, you determine that height and you have to manually adjust those. You should do that when your printer is warm, when the nozzle is up to temperature. I like to also have the print bed up to temperature. We're not going to cover that today. There are lots and lots of videos about leveling your print bed, many that I think are pretty good on this channel. But we are going to talk about how to test this easily if you're fortunate they have a printer with an auto bed leveling sensor. An auto bed leveling sensor is a way for the printer to determine how close to the bed the nozzle is. And there's a variety of different sensors. Some use induction, some use capacitance, some physically tap the print surface, BL touches, physically tap the print surface. It doesn't matter which type you have, but what does matter is you have to align that sensor to the tip of your nozzle. If we look at this picture here, the distance between the surface and where the actual nozzle is, is called the Z offset. And if you're fortunate to have a printer where you can adjust the Z offset, by changing that Z offset, you can change the characteristics of how close your nozzle is to the print bed. Even if you have a printer with an auto bed leveling system, you still should manually level your print bed to get it close. If you do not have an auto bed leveling sensor, then the adjustments that I'm going to be showing you here, where I use Z offset to make the adjustment and do the sample prints, you'll have to adjust manually by turning the various knobs, maybe a quarter a turn at a time. When you adjust the knobs that are under your print surface, there's generally a spring that you're adjusting. When you pull that spring down, which is by tightening the screw, tighty righty, you're increasing the gap between the nozzle and your print surface. When you loosen those screws, you're decreasing the gap. Now, if you're using Z offset, a negative Z offset moves the nozzle down. A positive Z offset moves the nozzle up. Now, let's take a look at the impact of various prints. And this is an example of a print properly adjusted. And see what happens if you're too close or too far, because some of the things you're gonna see aren't obvious. In this print that you're seeing on the screen now, you'll notice in the bottom left corner that the print seems thin. That's caused by the nozzle being too close to the print surface. So if I don't have an auto bed leveling system on this printer, when I print the sample print, I need to tighten the screw in the bottom left corner, which will pull the, the print surface down. By pulling it down, I'm increasing the gap to the nozzle. On the left, you'll see a picture of this print that is the proper distance. The nozzle's the proper distance. On the right, you'll see an example where the nozzle is too high. In general, if the nozzle is too high, your prints will not stick. Now, because this round circle in this sample is a large area, it makes it easier for the print to stick. But the numbers in the middle are relatively small. So you'll see on the screen here that the numbers did not stick. Now, another area that often won't stick is this skirt that's printed on the outside added by the slicer. If that skirt comes up, your nozzle is probably too high. Now, what if the nozzle is too low? Well, one of the interesting things about the nozzle being too low is that if it's only a little bit too low, you won't get that thinness of the print that I showed you a moment before. Instead, what you'll end up with is a print that looks like this, and I'll show you a close-up. It'll seem that your 
print is a little bubbly. And what that's caused by is the nozzle actually scraping up the prior layer as it continues to print. So if you look on the right-hand side of this image on the screen, you'll see that the image looks a little bubbly, a little uneven. Now you may also find a phenomena where it looks similar to that when the nozzle's a little too high. So you have to look for other symptoms when the nozzle's too low. One of the symptoms you'll see in this video. If you hear in the video, you'll hear a clicking. That clicking is because the extruder is trying to push the filament out the nozzle and it can't get it pushed out because it's too close to the print surface. So if you hear a clicking of your nozzle, if you have a thin layer, or even if you have bubbly layers, your nozzle might be too close. Now in this case, you'll see this print where the nozzle is correct. And on the right hand side, you'll see an example where the nozzle is too high. Now one of the other characteristics you'll see when your nozzle is too high is because your bead is so round, it's not spreading at all, the individual lines aren't connecting together. So surface quality will tell you a lot. So in conclusion, if your nozzle is too low, your extruder may click, you may see a thin print, or you may see a bubbly look if your nozzle is pushing up the filament as it prints. If your nozzle is too high, your print may not stick at all. Or it may stick, but once again, you'll see an imperfections in the top surface. Often you'll see gaps between the lines because it's not spreading enough. And if it's just right, you should see something like this. But it's hard to get it just right. So one of the things you can do to make your life easier is use a print adhesive. I, uh, I like Magic Goo, and I think it works great. I think it's worth the price. The other thing you can do is make sure your print surface is clean. Fingers are an enemy of good quality prints. Well, folks, I hope this tip was helpful. This is a little shorter video. Remember to subscribe to the channel, push, click the bell, go to forum.drvax.com to discuss this and upload pictures of your prints where over a thousand really nice and kind people can help you out with your 3D printing challenges. Thanks again. Let's continue to learn things together.